most martial arts in this country, but a lot of martial arts in this country, especially kung fu oriented martial arts, a wushu, which is more of a sport. This is a real art, real kung fu, and it's a very big difference. In autumn 2004, I learned about a Kung Fu class being taught in Cardiff. My father class instructor had brought this style back with him from China after his previous visit three years ago. He informed me of his plans to take a group of his students back to Luoyang, where he had originally learned this art. He invited me to accompany them on this unique journey. To me, this is a once in a lifetime chance. Well, there's thousands of people in martial arts in this country. Thousands of people have essentially adopted a Japanese, Chinese, Korean, whatever martial art and turned it into a sort of Western sport. I suppose there's very few martial artists in this country who are doing something really authentically Eastern. Um, and out of all of those, very, very few get a chance to actually go and meet the people who originated this. The way I was taught is the way I teach my students now. It's like walking and climbing a ladder. You can't jump onto the fifth rung if you haven't got your foot if, if you haven't got your foot in the first rung. So there are stages. Yeah, and those stages you progress through those stages once you demonstrate understanding and the ability to conduct those things. Bafang Kung Bi Chuen is a traditional Chinese closed door Kung Fu. This has been taught behind closed doors since, well, in Luoyang, in Junchuan, since the beginning of the Ming War period, 11th century. Uh, I'm currently 13th generation Tedang on master's side of the family, but it goes back further than that. Our teacher is Mike Farr. Now, he was um, trained in this art in China. His story is he was uh, teaching English in China and he trained in a martial, in Chinese martial arts before he left. Well, so we were working with the VSO. Uh, it was a, a woman called Karen who had married a Chinese doctor in Luoyang. And they moved back, they were married and they came to this country. He had uh, someone he was teaching medicine to who had learned Kung Fu from Wang Hongjun. When he left Luoyang, he asked his best friend Ho Jin Li to introduce me to Wang Hongjun, my master, who was training in Dong Fang Wu Shu Shui Hao. Behind a big, big metal door, closed, locked, you couldn't, you couldn't get over it until you couldn't see through. He asked to be taught and was refused point blank. But Mike being Mike, went back again and again and again asking to be taught. I was introduced to this very small man big smile, nothing much to look at. He looked me up and down, he asked me to do one or two things, I did them for him. Okay, come back tomorrow. I went back the next day. No longer training with someone, I better train to learn from this guy. I kind of had this idea that he was really special, you know, just from, from the aura, from, from his presence. You know, he's very small, very powerful man. After that month, I received a letter from him, a formal invitation to go to his home in Junchun village. I went up there on the Sunday, and he made me a member of his family. Because the real Kung Fu that he taught me can only be passed from father to son. Master trusts my judgment. Implicitly, basically, easy. you're a good man, you have a good head. I trust your judgment. And I've passed on to my students. They say, oh, a friend of mine wants to look at learning. Okay, well, bring him up and have a chat. Are they, are they trustworthy? Are they decent people? I'm going to trust your judgment on this, the same as he's trusted mine. He's kind of passing it down the line. You know, that's how we get students. I was looking around for ages, looking for a... Uh, Kung Fu School, couldn't find one. 
and then I was I came past a poster for this club, but it was the previous club, not this one now. It was um, with Mike and Tony and uh, Paul. After a year and a half of doing that, Mike came back from China and uh, and brought back this system. The class typically um, lasts about two hours. Everyone warms up in the same way. We start off every time with 12 breaths, which is a breathing exercise, which is a lot about um, internal energy flow, expanding lung capacity, controlling yourself, controlling your breathing, calming you down, rooting you. After that, we generally have a, a brutal warm up, which is all sorts of exercises, a lot of stretching, push ups, various physical exercises. Um, Partner work, stretching. Balance is the first thing that anybody will learn. Balance points, how to control balance. Stances, there are two main stances in this system. Gongbo or Marbo or bow stance and horse stance. Those stances are the foundations of this art. They've got to be right, they've got to be strong. You know, if you, can't, if you can't stand properly, how can you practice Kung Fu? How do you practice any martial art? When I originally sort of put it to the class, everyone to a man and a woman put their hand up. You know, there's a kiss of really. Not yet, maybe next time. You, you thought about what this really means? What about you, you're a student, you haven't got a lot of money, can you afford to do this? If it works, I'll be the happiest man in the world. Must will be as happy as me, probably happier. Yeah. If it goes wrong, I, I, I don't even want to go there. I, don't, I, I, I refuse to, to contemplate that. Just come here from um, London Heathrow in Budapest Airport, um, waiting for the next leg. Nine hours to China. I don't know what to expect. Everyone's told me, and I've spoken to people that have been there, and I've talked to Mike and stuff. And apparently, it's gonna. We are all gonna get a major reaction, but you don't know how you'll react to it till you've, till um, you're in it. It'll probably quite be. It, it'll be quite nice, I would imagine, because we're there for a couple of weeks. If it was a couple of months or a couple of years, and I'm sure it'd get annoying. But it's nice to be a little minor celebrity for a couple of days. I should imagine. Yeah, we're, we're all here, we're in Beijing, we've got our train tickets, we're going to be in Luang on April the 1st, the, the meet us in the morning, there'll be a, probably a big sort of welcoming banquet type of thing, and then they're all really excited, they're excited to meet everybody. On arrival in Beijing, the group seemed excited at the prospect of seeing real China. The first visit made was to Tiananmen Square, famous to most Westerners for the horrific scenes of violence by the army against the unarmed protesters in 1989. Second day in Beijing, and uh, it's an early start this morning because we're off to the Great Wall. So uh, we'll, we'll have to make a move. We'll have to have a chat when we get back this evening and sort of check out what time we've got to check out. Uh, 300. This is very beautiful. Uh, <laughs> 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 
As the class left Beijing on the last leg of the journey to Luoyang, the tension levels could be felt. Mike seemed understandably nervous at the prospect of returning to Luoyang with the class and being reunited with his master. 